Okay, this video is, what's it like to be a low-fat, low-sodium, vegan, organic, plant-based Christian doctor with no oil, alcohol, soy, or tap water? Okay, so what am I getting at? A little bit of uh, sour grapes here. So, Zeus on his throne, the Thunderbolt is like big pharma and big food and all this high-fat, keto nonsense. And Zeus doesn't like it when nutrition experts teach the proles the truth. Okay, and so here was Prometheus, the ancient Greek, who stole fire from Zeus's Mount Olympus, and then Zeus decided to have him punished. He had him tied to a rock, and every day the eagle would eat his liver, and the liver can regenerate, so that could actually happen. Okay. Prometheus punished for trying to help mankind, tr trying to help the proles, and sort of one legend has it that Hercules came along and shot the eagle with an arrow. Okay, but I don't know if that's really going to happen. Okay, so here is uh, now the <clears throat> Plato's allegory of a cave that once, like Socrates, somebody's gone out and seen the truth, the light about health and how all this stuff would just load the pearls with drugs as a bunch of BS and most of these diseases are curable. They're due to diet, they're due to diet and toxicology, but no one knows, almost no one knows diet and toxicology. The vegan community at least... You know, the low-fat vegans, no diet. They still don't know toxicology and all that other stuff. Okay, so anyways, this was the story here of both Rome and ancient Greece. Aeneas, pious Aeneas, doing his duty, carrying his father out of burning Troy after the Trojan War when the Trojans had lost. And Will Durant says, if a man is fortunate, the best he can do before he dies is to pass on his legacy of the things that are good in his civilization and try to transmit this to the next generation, to give to them the civilized heritage. At his final breath, he will be grateful for this inexhaustible legacy, knowing it is the nourishing mother and our lasting life. Civilization is not inherited. Civilization has to be learned. If transmission is interruption, interrupted, civilization will die. Okay, so nice painting of Aeneas carrying his father by Carl Van Lu. Okay, and so in a sense, that's what I'm doing here. I'm carrying out the legacy of Dr. McDougal and the other low-fat, plant-based vegan doctors. And I joke here, Egan, the fight, uh, McDougal, the fighting Irish, telling, "Put me down, you arrogant little upstart." Just doing my job, my job, Johnny. Okay. All right. Now here is what it's like. You know, I see all these nonsense idiot, lightweight scumbags promoting high-fat diets, promoting paleo, carnivore, low-carb, all this nonsense, lying to the proles. There's tons and tons of epidemiology to support the low-fat, low-sodium vegan diet. It's pretty obvious, but I also see this, you know, these low-IQ numbskulls. You know, I like Uberman, even though he's lightweight, and there's other ones out there, too. They'll have millions and millions of views. I'm getting 200 views per video. Ridiculous. They don't want me teaching the proles. Of course, I'm shadow banned. I'm, they don't want me telling the proles the truth about nutrition, about toxicology, about EMF, about history. No, no, no. They want the proles ignorant and stupid and easy to control. And the next thing you do, if you get any known at all, the next thing they do is they declare you a heretic. You're a heretic, and you know, and Martin Luther, yeah, he's a pain in the ass, but he was entertaining too, the, some of the things he said. Show me, look through all my books, show me the error, and I will be the first one to throw my books into the fire. You're a heretic, he says. I am captive to my conscience and to God. So help me God. That's Martin Luther, the Diet of Worms. Okay, and then here's a nice painting of The Bard by John Martin, the great English artist, about 1817. Basically almost talking to himself. 200 viewers there across the, across the, the stream there, the rapids. Okay, and then I kind of end up feeling like Soren Kierkegaard. Soren Kierkegaard basically said, either or. You know, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you, if you just conform and be a good little boy... It's like falling asleep on a hay wagon. You stagnate, your life sucks, and then you die. He says, if you at least do what you think is right, be a nonconformist, it's like riding a stallion. And you might fail, and you might get screwed over, but at least you lived. Okay. And also, anybody who knows anything about history and art knows that this is what it all comes down to. Either you have a God-based worldview, Bible-based, 
man created in the image of God, part divine as well as part beast, but at least therefore entitled to some privacy, to some respect, to kindness, to free speech, and all that other stuff. And if you don't have this, you don't have anything. All this stuff, you know, lots of nice people, Buddhist, atheist, Hindu, all this stuff, fine. But if you don't have a biblical worldview, you don't have the metaphysics to stand up to communism. You just don't, okay? And being nice isn't good enough. You have to have a solid metaphysical Christian ethics or you have no freedom and you will be a slave and you have no right to say you have any that you're not a slave. You can say whatever you want. You can have a hissy fit, but you do not have the metaphysics to demand that you not be a slave. I'm sorry, but that's a fact. And everybody knows this. And even Jordan Peterson, controlled opposition weasel that he is, he knows this too, and he's actually made videos about that too. It's obvious. If you know history, and you know this history of the West, and you know the history of communism, that is obvious, okay? And look at this. This is beautiful. You know, the Holy Family, the family in general, you know, the, the baby, the whole thing is great. And this is what mankind has always been, this idea of the modern craziness trying to destroy the traditional, you know, Christian family. It's ridiculous, okay? If you don't have the family, you go against what's sort of natural history since the beginning of the world. You know, and when I was in high school, I didn't know a single person that was all this new modern stuff. Okay, and I'm sure there were some maybe who existed, but it was really rare. Now it's really common, okay, because all this cultural pressure and all these estrogenic chemicals in the water, in the food, in the air, in the trails. Oh, boy. We had such a beautiful Christmas time. It was the best day of the whole year when I was growing up. And look how magnificent all this art is. And it's been great for a long time. This is from 1435, Descent from the Cross by Rogier van der Veen. And it's just magnificent from the Archers Guild. It's beautiful. I know great art. I've seen a ton of it. And it's mostly made by the Christian tradition. And this modern fake art, it's an insult. It's a bunch of crap, literally and figuratively. And you must reject this. If you accept this, you're just one more step towards being groomed for slavery. It, it's, it's a sign of saying you have no brain, you don't trust your eyes to accept this. It's not funny, it's not nice, it's a major insult. And like I said, imagine if a person from the Renaissance came and saw that in our museum. They would say, you people are sick, you're disgusting, you're vile. Look how magnificent this is from the Italian Renaissance, Michelangelo's Pietà, which is really almost, in a sense, too, his own sadness about losing his mother when he's only seven years old. It's the greatest statue of all time, it's magnificent. And look at all this other great stuff, okay, all the uh, great literature. And what a magnificent century the 1800s were for the production of literature and art. Holy crap. Charles Dickens' greatest novel ever written. He's an English, you know, Protestant. Les Mis, Catholic, uh, French author Victor Hugo, Brothers Karamazov, the Russian Orthodox, Fyodor Dostoevsky, and Ayn Rand. This is like the, probably the best book ever written about understanding real art and real literature. It's a masterpiece. And like I said, I call her the closet Christian because even though she'll rant and rave and have her little hissy fits, all she does is say how magnificent the great Christian authors were, uh, like Victor Hugo. To read Victor Hugo is to feel like one is walking into a cathedral. It's so magnificent. Look how beautiful these buildings are. The greatest buildings ever made, okay? And they've been making them since, you know, around 1200. Okay, nobody, moderns can do anything as beautiful anywhere. There's not even 10% as beautiful as this in the modern world, all the crap we see nowadays. Okay, and then the Aristotelian philosophy. Ayn Rand had it totally right. Aristotle is sort of what it's all about for, the, you know, man respecting his rational mind and creating a world where everybody could have a decent life. Um, and, you know, so I love uh, Thomas Aquinas and try to be like him, the idea of syncretism, to take what is best known in the past and sort of make it all fit together with the modern world. And this is, you know, Aristotle's uh, thinking sort of came through in scholasticism, and this ushered in the Italian Renaissance and all the great things that came with that. And that's the painting where Aquinas sort of asked God, say, hey, I tried, you know, I wish I could have done more. And God said, ah, you did fine. Okay, this is also how life could be, and this is how America was tending to me. I remember what it was like back in the 1980s, 1970s. Okay, so here's a, the painting, Course of Empire, the Consummation, the Apex, the Summit, the Zenith, the Peak, by Thomas Cole of the Hudson River School. And this is what America could be like if it wanted to be like, if the people understood all the resources they have, which they don't even understand. So all this fake 
trouble is, is happening in America that doesn't have to happen and the border's been opened up intentionally with the desire to destroy the place. It doesn't have to be that way, but sadly it's going that way. And so here's what's happening. And these are also the, the historical cycles of Gian Battista Vico. You know, he basically wrote that basically once a country gets prosperous, then their philosophers and their so-called intellectuals, they reject God, they reject religion, and then the public becomes immoral. They lose their religion, they lose their traditions, and they become sort of decadent and weak and hedonistic and stupid, and then they get taken over and forced into slavery. And that's sort of the phase America is in right now, sadly. I know the history of America. I know it was founded by a bunch of Christians, like 98% of them. They would pray in the same buildings where they would make the laws, okay? All of the, the public buildings, they used them as churches, okay? That's how religious they were. I mean, Thomas Jefferson, by modern standards, would be a religious fanatic, okay? He'd reading the Bible in five different languages, having all these different copies of it, sharing it with people, funding all these Bible studies, come on. You try to get, they try to give you this bogus history that it, they weren't Christians, okay? Um, I have a whole courses on that. Gosh, what is it? One's right here, I think. What is this one right here? The American Heritage. What's this one there by, uh, what's this guy's name? Oh, I don't want to take too much of your time. David Barton. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. And there's a whole bunch of other ones like that. Okay, unveiling the Statue of Liberty. Magnificent. And this is what America was like. This is what it was like when I grew up in the, 19, uh, in the 1970s, okay? We had it great, 1980s. You know, moms didn't have to work. The country was so rich. The moms would stay home. The family would do all kinds of things together, go on vacations. Uh, we even had a cottage in Wisconsin back in those days. Um, <clears throat> you could go to college if you wanted to, but you didn't have to. I knew lots of guys from high school. They'd just go get a job in construction, have a good salary, buy a nice house in a nice, in a nice uh, pretty decent you know, neighborhood, middle class, and uh, their wife wouldn't have to work, all on one income. That's how it was. Nowadays, both people are working and they're having a hard time making it with both of them working. Okay, and then here is, you know, the great painting. And this is sort of where America's at, but the sheep are so stupid. Basically, the storm is coming. A couple little dogs to protect them who can't do much. The pastor says rally to the cross. And hopefully the sheep are smart enough to realize that's their only hope of survival. But they're probably too stupid and they're bickering amongst themselves and they don't understand the real issue and they're about to be picked off by the wolves because they're so stupid and they don't help each other. I go to I go to Amazon and I see thousand reviews for all these stupid books that aren't even true and my book will have zero reviews, one review, two reviews, okay? There's no money in helping the pros, but it's the right thing to do and I'm going to do it even if I don't get 10 cents. Okay, and then here is <clears throat> what one can see. And this is what it's really coming down to. And if you don't think this is what it's coming down to, then you're an ignoramus, okay? It's either going to be good or evil. And, and evil is winning. Evil is winning big time because good is so stupid and evil is so smart. It's kind of sad. And <laughs> the good are so clueless and dumb. They have no idea what's going on. None whatsoever. St. Augustine. Wrong is wrong, even if everyone is doing it. Right is right, even if no one is doing it. Dostoevsky, God and the devil are fighting for the heart of men. Sometimes, even if he has to do it alone and his conduct seems crazy, a man must set an example and so draw men's souls out of their solitude and spur them on to some act of brotherly love that the great idea may not die. We can all live well. There's a ton of resources. You have no idea how much oil, natural gas, and other resources are really available. All this stuff about shortage, it's all BS. There's no shortage. That's all BS. And so here's, you know, <clears throat> you can either go to health heaven or health hell. All the good things that make you healthy, all the things that make you sick. And, you know, what's it going to be? Most people, they don't do it on purpose. They're just ignoramuses. They end up in hell, hell. <laughs> Most people don't age well. I see disasters all day long every day. But if you just study the, the people who've been healthy, that's pretty much how you learn anything. Study the people who've already succeeded. And there's lots of good health news. I, I, I go through all of it with my videos on this channel. 
Okay, and when I first learned all this stuff, I read all the McDougal books and I read all the other stuff. I'm like, oh gosh, this is great. I'm gonna, you know, it's like, you know, Christ giving the keys to heaven to St. Peter. And then he thought, I thought this is great. You know, and here's a the picture of St. Peter. He's just uh, walking along and then his shadow is healing the people. So the one, and as he walks by, the shadow heals them and they stand up and they're okay. And I thought, I'm gonna be rich. Now I know how to heal all these chronic diseases. I wish I had known this. I could have saved my parents. This is going to be great. And then I started talking to people, and they're all like, "I'd rather die than than not eat meat and all this other stuff." You know, you know what it's like. I got a whole bunch of relatives. They all know the truth, but they don't want to do it. They don't want to be healthy. All right. They don't want to make the effort it takes. Everybody wants a quick fix pill, but there is no real quick fix that works. Here's Saint Peter preaching in the catacombs, and that's a little bit like what this YouTube channel is. Tiny little crowds, you know, I'll give a video, make the best video in the world on a topic. Because a lot of viewers say to me, oh, your, show, your site's going to get big or someday you're going to be well known or all this stuff. Oh, bullshit, I'll always be shadow banned. But I'm still going to do it. It's the right thing to do. So as long as I'm able to, I'll keep making this channel. But this is what it's like, you know, tiny little audiences. Um, and uh, in comparison, you know, all these phony doctors promoting high fat diets and all this other nonsense. High fat veganism, by the way, it's nonsense. Some people say, oh, why don't you make a video about these high fat vegans or debate these high fat vegans? They don't want to debate me because I'll make them look bad, okay? And high fat is bogus. They just want to sell you stuff, okay? It's all bogus crap. All right. So, anyways, I know what's coming. This right here is Katin. Why don't you look that up if you want to educate yourself? What happened in Katin, okay? Back in the 1940s, there's real history for you. That's what happens to the scholars. The scholars, that's the plan for the Christian scholar doctors. That's what they're going to do to them. So anyways, when the time comes, like St. Peter, you know, I'll get mine. But in, while I'm still alive, I'll try to save the proles. And this is a nice painting by Caravaggio, Crucifixion of St. Peter. And then here's 2 Timothy, okay, chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. 